This is Bert the turtle. He knew just what to do. He was created by the Office of Civil Defense in the early 1950s to teach kids what to do in case a nuclear bomb happened to go off nearby. It has that kind of schmarmy 1950s patronizing attitude. Remember what to do, friends. Now tell me right out loud. That doesn't resonate with us at all anymore. And it's directed for children, so they don't ever say, you might just die, right? That would be a little bit much for children, probably. This is Alex Wellerstein. He created the Nuke Map, which allows you to simulate a nuclear explosion on top of your house in Google Maps. It's actually disturbingly fun. It's easy to make fun of these things, but the advice for, especially for that generation of nuclear weapon, is not terrible advice. It's actually pretty good advice. Today, we're facing down rogue nations and terrorists, not the Soviet Union. But it turns out the advice from these old films is pretty good advice today, too. They will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. There's a lot we don't know about when and how a nuclear weapon might be used against us, but we do know a nuclear bomb would cause widespread devastation wherever it lands. So if one lands near you, what do you do? If you see a flash that's brighter than anything else that you've ever seen and it feels like the sun, that's probably a nuclear explosion. Don't spend time trying to figure out what that flash is because you may have about 10 to 15 seconds to do something. And what you do in that 10 to 15 seconds may actually save your life. Will it always save your life? No, there are circumstances that are just unavoidable, sorry. Anyone at or near the center of a nuclear explosion would be killed immediately by the fireball, searing radiation heat, or the blast wave. What you should do next depends on how far away you are from the initial explosion. If the ceiling is unstable and starts to fall, if the windows break and glass flies into wherever you are, getting behind a sturdy structure could save your life. If you're not in any immediate danger, Alex says the next thing to do is to find the best shelter you can, because after the explosion comes the fallout. What is this fallout anyhow? A nuclear bomb's mushroom cloud is made up of vaporized material from the explosion in the form of radioactive ash and dust. As wind pushes the cloud away from the blast site, that radioactive ash falls out of the cloud towards the earth in what we know as fallout. Imagine it's like a poison snow that's going to be coming your direction, and it's going to be falling down and sitting, and anything near where it's sitting is going to be a threat. Concrete helps. It blocks some of the poison from coming in. Windows don't help so much. If you are, say, in a basement under an apartment building, you have all of these layers of wood and concrete or whatever in between you and the poison snow, and each of those things are going to be absorbing these sort of poison rays coming out of the poison snow to some degree. Are they going to knock it down to zero? Maybe not, but if they knock it down by a few orders of magnitude, it stops from being something that's going to, you know, potentially kill you immediately to something that maybe over the very long term it will raise your cancer rate by a couple percentage points. That's not great, but it's better than being killed immediately. The radioactivity of fallout decays exponentially, which means the longer you wait, the safer you'll be. If you're really uncertain and you, nobody's in contact with you, wait like a week and you're fine. A week is more or less fine. Then you can get up, get out, re-emerge into the post-nuclear landscape and figure out what to do next. When most people think about what happens after a nuclear explosion, they think of a global wasteland. If one or even two nuclear bombs were to be detonated in the US, it would be devastating. But it wouldn't necessarily mean the end of the world, or even of the United States. In the end, the response would be similar to the natural disaster response you see from FEMA, which is actually what the Civil Defense Administration from the 1950s was folded into. If you go to this area of sort of nuclear weapons equals Armageddon, equals total destruction. You end up filing it in your mind under like things that could happen that are really awful and you don't want to think about that are really nothing that pertains to you. It slots into fatalism. It slots immediately into, well, nothing we can do about that. It's just an inevitable part of the world. But they're not an inevitable part of the world. We created them and we control them. In the end, the best way to keep us safe from a nuclear war is to not start one in the first place. Frankly, power the likes of which this world has never seen before.